Um, and then the third one is basically it's called confirmation bias or contextual bias. And confirmation bias is the tendency to seek out, interpret, judge, and remember information so that it supports our own pre-existing views and ideas. And it has a lot to do with this whole past element. But it's basically the identity in which we've developed into is going to put a biasism on our own realities. Um, for example, let's take religion. We have, you know, I grew up in the Church of Latter-day Saints. And so I look at all Christian religions in, in, in one way. I look at scripture in my own way, how I was taught ever since I was a kid. And, you know, the other day I, I like decided to kind of detach. And I said, what if I just looked at all Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, XY church, non-denominational. I said, what if I looked at things all contextually as they are in their beliefs in God and the universe and scripture, Christ, everything. And I laid everything in front of me and it was very interesting because it took away for the first time in my life the confirmation bias in which I supported every idea and frame in which I saw the world or religion or spirituality in and of itself. And it was quite freeing actually to look at, you know, look at things that way, look at them from a holistic universal lens, um, almost as if God would, would look at them that way, um, instead of the puppy dog version, the beaten up, the, you know, calloused you. And contextual bias is all in which we put frames in the context in which we're looking at it. So take drugs, for example. You know, I don't do drugs. It's not been like in my religious background. But if you look at like, take um, I don't know. Let's take uh, acid, for example. So what is it? It's a fungus or peyote. Let's use peyote. So peyote, the Indians did it for a long time. And it was a, it was like a social, traditional hallucinogen that helped them have these visions or whatever, right? And to us, we're like, we look at that drug and we're like, dude, it's drug. But to an Indian, in context, when, how and when they used it, it was very a spiritual religious practice that they would do. So us, we're like, man, you guys are just getting high on this peyote. And they're like, no, this is like the most connected and spiritual element of we've ever been with our, you know, the universe or God or however they looked at it in their practice. And so it's all in context. If I was born into a family which, you know, did X, Y, Z or a religion or a business situation, um, you know, I look at like business culture. Uh, there's a company I used to work for, big alarm company, and you know, the, the way that they saw the door-to-door -door industry was, we are the only ones out here. We're the best. There's there's only one way to do this. Our, our training is the best. And I'm like, dude, I have debunked that 50 times over. There's a lot of great companies. There's a lot of people that do it the right way. There's a lot of awesome training. There's a lot of good leaders out there. And But yet the context in which they were saying that, it's like, yeah, if you were in there, maybe that's how you had to see things. Um, and so the problem is, is we'd be able to accomplish more if we were able to break past our own limiting lens and see things from like just neutral. What is like if I could look at things as the is instead of take away instead of having contextual limitations or confirmation biasism, I would actually be able to supersede my own belief system and a lot of the the limitation actually comes from the ego and you know, there's a quote by Ryan Halliday that I like that says the ego we see most commonly goes by a more casual definition, an unhealthy belief in our own importance, arrogance, self-centeredness, ambition um, from the book e Ego is the Enemy. And, you know, it's interesting um, to put things into kind of context. There's a uh, Paul Jenkins gave a talk at Door to Door Con a couple of years ago, and I did some counseling with him. Great dude. Yes, a basically this. Um, pathological happiness book that's really good and he has this formula and he talks about everything could always be worse and everything could always be better so where are we going to sit when we evaluate and when we create the future and when we evaluate the is ask yourself could it, it could it be worse and so you know there's a time when I was driving up into the mountains to go camping and I was trying to get a bunch of business calls done and I remember I was talking to a team lead and I was like, hey, man, like, how are things going? And he's like, hey, the entire team just picked up and left. And then the phone cuts out and I'm sitting there like, oh, man. <laughs> so no service, couple days. You know, I know Steven has had multiple moments when we drop him off in the jungle in the and in the <laughs> it's like same thing. Team is leaving. He's like, I don't have service. 
<laughs> He's over here laughing. Um, anyway, so I've had this situation before where I'm like, oh, crap. So I now have a choice to say all the worst case scenarios. They took all the team. I don't have a cell phone. They're going to call all my other teams. They're going to start poaching them. And then I'm going to like, come home. There's going to be no reps left. I'm going to have to start over. And I know how hard it was. Blah, 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 blah. What does that do? It creates what we call anxiety. So the anticipation of the unknown in the future and the ultimate worst case scenario is going to be anxiety. And many of us suffer from anxiety before we got into the field, in the sales, sales calls. You know, what if they all yell at me and, and we create the worst case scenario? This neighborhood's going to beat me up. I'm going to get the cops calling me, blah, blah, blah. Well, no, what is you're still getting, sitting in your car and you're still driving out the area. Now you're just creating worst case scenario. So how you evaluate things is it always could be worse is how you need to evaluate it. Meaning, well, at least not all of the team picked up and died. They just left. Or it could be worse. The guy calling me could have left with them or, you know, it could be worse. Uh, we could have got a flat tire on the way to area and never even got to area. Um, and then you eva and then you create a better situation. So the best case scenario is they all just left to go to Applebee's and then they were going to be back on the like or they went on a preseason trip and then they're coming back and they never even left our company. And, you know, so it's this. You, you get to dictate whether you want to evaluate the past as bad, and that's what creates this depression, or see the gift in the past and say, oh, we lived through that. Those are experiences that make me who I am, and evaluate that. And then, then I don't have this depression. I don't have this stuck in the past. It could be worse. Is going to help me see things from positive lens, and then it's going to be better in the future. It's going to help keep me in a positive lens. If I flip-flop those two, I'm going to end up always in the negative, always in the pessimism. And a lot of people in business and sales, we get stuck in that that rut. And, you know, I think there's an interesting excerpt from the book, and I'm going to read this. It says, how do we feel when people around us habitually react to challenges with negative negativity? Conversely, how do we feel when the reaction of the, to difficult situations is instinctly positive? Difficult challenges, even painful disasters, are viewed as opportunities for invention, creation, innovation, and positive change. Energy replaces apathy. Focus replaces fear. Determination replaces doubt. Truth replaces tra tradition. Productivity, and that truth replaces tradition. That's where the context, that's where the uh, confirmation bias. Productivity replaces lethargy. We're all often, or we are all after one thing, the feeling. The feeling that life is good. The feeling that life is great. The life is perfect. The life is, li this is our quest. All theories, philosophies, policies, practices, and tools are roads which, are intended to lead us to the realm, to feel good, better, great. Success is accomplished through an accurate understanding and application of what brings us the feeling. Failure is accomplished through an er erroneous understanding and application of what brings us the feeling. Our objective in life is to achieve or acquire the feeling. Pathological positivity is the process of acquiring the feeling. It always works. Meaning it always works is seeing things as they are and as the is and saying this is exactly what needs to be happening right now in the moment and i'm not going to get worked up about what's going to be happening in the future i could lose my job i might have a i might have to sell my house i might have to you know all the things that could happen that's not going to make me happy it's exactly working out how it's supposed to work out and i'm doing everything i can to make it work out how it's supposed to and whatever happened to the past is the past whatever's going to happen in the future is the future and this is the is line so I hope that you guys um, can maintain yourselves and your emotions and your thoughts and your logic to, to live on that is line and that you can practice presence because this is what makes somebody masterful at achievement. And as you look at trying to accomplish a lot in life, you can't get anywhere until you are where you are. Let's do one now.